When there's a duplicate IP address on your network, the stations that are duplicating themselves are not going to be very happy because they're not going to be receiving the information they would expect to see on the network. Those machines will probably have a conflict and be fighting with each other. Sometimes they'll receive traffic. Sometimes they won't receive traffic. And it creates a number of conflicts and problems within both those workstations and perhaps even the switch that you happen to be using. If you have statically addressed devices on your network, then you have to be very careful not to duplicate any IP addresses that might already be on the network. And the more static addresses you have, the more you need to be concerned about this. So it's good to keep everything organized in a central database or a central spreadsheet to make sure that you don't accidentally assign the same IP address to two different devices. Many networks are using DHCP to automatically assign IP addresses to devices, but even DHCP can't avoid every possible instance of a duplicate IP address. For example, you will have devices on your network that you must statically assign an IP address to, so you need to make sure that your DHCP server is not also going to give out that IP address to another device on the network. And you also need to be careful that other machines aren't started up that might also be performing DHCP functions. Occasionally, someone will accidentally enable DHCP functionality on a device, and now you have this rogue DHCP server out there assigning the exact same IP addresses as another DHCP server on your network. If you suddenly then have two devices, both with the same IP address, and there's no mechanism within those devices to recognize a duplicate IP, then they're going to begin fighting with each other. They're going to be in a situation where one device thinks it should be receiving that traffic, and it will be answering ARP requests from a router at the same time that the other device is answering those ARP requests. And now you have two MAC addresses that supposedly have the same IP address, and obviously you can't have all of that information go to both of the devices, you have a switch or other devices on your network that now have to choose which device they're going to send that information to. A number of newer operating systems will do a check first to make sure that the IP address that they're using is not already in use somewhere else on the network. And if it is, it pops up a message on your screen that says, I've already detected this IP address on the network. I'm not going to communicate at all until you change the IP address of this workstation, and then you'll be able to communicate on the network. One of the more common places where you can make a mistake with duplicate IP addresses is in the initial configuration. So if you are statically assigning IP addresses to a device, just double check and make sure that you didn't make a mistake when you inputted the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, or any of the other parameters that you have in there. That's a common mistake to make, but it's a very simple one to resolve. You might also, before you use that IP address, go to another system on the network and ping that address just to see if anything else will respond back. That way, you can at least know that you tried to contact a machine out there. And if you get a response back, you'll know immediately that that is not an IP address that you should be using for another device on the network. If you have a duplicate set of IP addresses on the network, you can ping that IP address, and you're going to get an ARP response from one device or the other. So you can look at your ARP table that's in your computer to see what the listings are, so you can see what your machine thinks is associated this IP address to whose MAC address. And at that point, you can go to your switch, which has a big table of different MAC addresses, and begin tracing back what port on the switch is connected to that MAC address. And finally, you can find at least one of those stations that happens to have that IP address on it, and you can disconnect it from the network. Then you can repeat exactly the same thing again, find the other MAC address, and now you'll found both of those systems that are sharing the same IP address. If you feel that your duplicate IP address issue is related to a mismatch or some other problem with the DHCP, then you can put a packet capture device on your network and watch the communication that occurs while a DHCP address is being assigned. Then you can look through the MAC addresses of those DHCP responses to determine where are those DHCP servers. And then you can track those down and see if they are configured correctly. By understanding more about how these IP addresses are assigned and performing some of these troubleshooting processes, if a duplicate IP address ever occurs, we can maintain the uptime and availability of our network.